Lupus causes hair loss in approximately 60% of patients. So today's video is very important for most people who have lupus. The medical term for hair loss is alopecia. Interestingly, every once in a while, I'll have a patient come to me and tell me that their doctor told them that the cause of their hair loss was alopecia. But actually, alopecia and hair loss mean exactly the same thing. Whenever we have someone with hair loss, it's very important that we figure out the cause of the hair loss in order to get them the right treatment and know what to do for them. This is a patient of mine that I met about 20 years ago. She had really severe lupus that was attacking her kidneys, it was attacking her joints, the skin. The most devastating to her is that it was attacking her scalp and giving her this hair loss that you see in the photo. After a thorough workup, I told her that I could definitely help her and that I promised her that her hair would grow back. This is a type of hair loss that we see in lupus called, called non-scarring alopecia. And fortunately, it does grow back with treatment. Throughout the rest of the video, you'll occasionally hear me talk about scarring alopecia versus non-scarring alopecia. Those are the two major different types of hair loss that we do see in lupus. Hippocrates was the father of modern medicine, and he's the one who gave us the term alopecia. He noted that the hair loss that occurred in people looked similar to what they would see in foxes, or something that they called, that we call fox mange, or that they called alopecia. So he called hair loss in people alopecia, which became today's version of alopecia. So alopecia means hair loss. Lupus alopecia and lupus hair loss, exactly the same thing. One of my patients once told me that, Dr. Thomas, I know it's just my hair and I, it shouldn't bother me at all that, I, that I'm losing my hair. I'm just glad that I still have my kidneys and that they're doing well for my lupus. Well, hair loss is an important problem. It may not be life-threatening, but it, looks how, it affects how we look, and more importantly, it affects how we feel. Although hair loss may not be, a tra although hair loss may not be dangerous, it definitely interferes with how we think about ourselves. It's a tragic complication that occurs in lupus, but it's important to realize that you do have things that are under your control. This video, I'm going to talk about how lupus causes hair loss, the different types of hair loss that occur in lupus, and I'll give, most importantly, some practical information and easy to understand language that you can do yourself at home in order to help improve your hair loss. And remember that knowledge is power. I promise that by your watching this video, that you will learn valuable information, even if you're someone who already knows a lot about lupus. And you know that all of us want to look good. How we think about how we look to others and feeling good about ourselves directly affects our mental health and how we also behave. If you do as I recommend, and in this video you'll have the tools to deal better with hair loss, and you'll feel more confident in how you look and how you feel, and others around you will also sense this. My name is Dr. Donald Thomas, and I specialize in lupus. I'm in private practice in uh, the suburbs of Washington, D.C., and I'm also an associate professor of medicine at the Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences in Bethesda, Maryland. I'd like to thank the Lupus Foundation of America for sponsoring today's video, and I'd like to thank the Johns Hopkins University Press for letting me use some of the photos from my patient education book, called the Lupus Encyclopedia. So make sure that you take lots of notes during this video. You can rewind it if you need to uh, during important parts. And, and, and if you have some important tips to share with others about how to deal with hair loss and lupus, please put, the, put your recommendations in the comments below. I have no pertinent disclosures or conflicts to, to uh, disclose uh, about this particular video. Not only can lupus cause hair loss, but it can cause some other problems with hair. For example, the very medicines that we use to treat lupus can sometimes cause hair color changes. Hydroxychloroquine and, and chloroquine can sometimes cause decreased pigmentation, early premature graying, and even increased pigmentation of the hair. 
cyclophosphamide, which is a strong uh, chemotherapy that we use, especially for severe lupus nephritis, where it attacks the kidneys, can sometimes cause red hair to turn black or blonde hair to turn or blonde hair to turn brown. It's helpful to know how our immune system works normally in the body. This brown fellow here, he's a white blood cell. And these are green bacteria that are invading the body. Well, the white blood cell senses these foreign invaders and it sends out antibodies that recognize these bacteria and attack them. And these, these antibodies, they draw other white blood cells in the immune system to the bacteria so that it can destroy those bacteria. And this is normally how the normal immune system should work. So what happens in the person who has systemic lupus? Well, in the person who has lupus, in our, inside of our body, our cells are constantly uh, dying and retiring. And when they do, they release their internal contents, the, the proteins that are inside the nucleus, like the DNA into the bloodstream. And then our immune system recycles them. But in the person with lupus, Remember how your rheumatologist told you that you're positive for these antibodies like ANA, anti-nuclear antibody, anti-DNA? Well, these autoantibodies, they see these proteins that come right from your own cells, and it thinks that this DNA and these other proteins are foreign invaders. So the antibodies, they attach to your own molecules, and then they form these, these molecules called immune complexes. These immune complexes, they can float throughout the bloodstream and land in different organs where they can cause inflammation and damage, such as the, such as the kidneys, for example. But they can also do the same thing with, the hair, with, the, with our scalp and the hair follicles. Uh, this diagram here, this shows you what a hair follicle and hair uh, looks like. Uh, the hair shaft is what we see above the skin, and this is the dead part of the, dead part of the hair. But underneath the skin is a part of the hair called the hair follicle. This is the living part of hair. And this is the area that the lupus immune system can actually attack. At first, it can cause inflammation. And if that inflammation is left uncontrolled, it can lay down permanent scar tissue. That follicle dies and it permanently goes away. And this can lead to a type of lupus hair problem called scarring alopecia. And that's the type of hair loss that can be devastating because it's permanent and it never comes back. We want to catch this when it's in the inflammatory stage. The other way that lupus can cause hair loss is, uh, is with the, uh, is like in my patient who had the non-scarring alopecia. So with my patient who had the, the really severe active lupus, when lupus is severely active, it wants, to, it wants to conserve energy and conserve protein for the vital organs of the body, such as the kidneys, the heart, and the brain. And so parts of our body that not, are not that important, like our hair and also our nails, the body actually stops producing it very much because it wants to conserve that energy. And when this happens, the hair follicle will rest and but when you treat the lupus, the hair grows back. And we call that, call that non-scarring alopecia because, the, because permanent scarring does not happen in the scalp and it does grow back. The medical term for this is telogen effluvium. And I always think it's important that patients know what doctors write and what they talk about. Like if you get copies of your doctor's notes, you want to know what those doctor notes say. So if, you're, if your doctor's notes states that you have telogen effluvium, you know exactly what it means. It's a type of non-scarring alopecia that we can see in lupus, but also in other things such as stressful events, fever, other illnesses, and even pregnancy. So this slide here, it shows, the, it shows the stages of hair growth. Hair growth occurs in three major stages. There's the growth stage, which is called antigen, and this is when the, the hair is growing inside of the follicle. And then it goes out of the, out of the skin where we can see it into the in-between stage called the catagen stage. And then the resting stage is called the telogen stage. And in the telogen stage, the hair starts to separate from the follicle. And then if you brush your hair during this period, you'll, you can pull that hair out when it happens. And then you can see hair right on your hairbrush, just like you see in the picture here. Well, the word for that hair coming out of the hair shaft is effluvium. 
Effluvium is the, is the Greek term that means to flow away or to flow out of that their hair follicle. So telogen effluvium, it describes that period of time when most of, or many of the hair follicles are in the resting stage. And when you brush your hair, hair can uh, come out on your brush. But in the severe stages, like in my patient here, you can actually see thinning of the hair as well. But the good news is that it can grow back. There's another type of non-scarring alopecia that occurs in our lupus patients, and she had the same thing. If you notice at the very front of her scalp, at the hairline, she has these very short, brittle hairs, and, and this is a, uh, it looks, almost looks like someone took scissors and clipped the very front part of it, and we call this lupus hair, or it's also called woolly hair, and it's actually a type of telogen effluvium, and again, this is a sign of, of lupus hair loss, and it does grow back with treatment. Now, one way we can diagnose non-scarring alopecia or telogen effluvium is by something called the hair pull test. And by the way, this is something you can do yourself at home uh, to see if you might have this problem. You just grab some hair. You typically want to grab about 60, uh, 60 hairs in your fingers, and then you want to pull it out. And normally, I, like I don't see any hair right here on mine, you should... Less than 10% of your hair should be in the in the telogen stage. So if you pull on 60 hairs, six or less of them should pull out when you look at it in your in your hand. But look at this patient here. There's definitely more than six hairs. This is a patient who has telogen effluvium because more than six hairs were able to be pulled out with the hair pull test. When someone has this type of hair loss, it's very important that we get some blood tests to look for other causes. Of, of this type of hair loss. For example, low vitamin D levels can cause uh, hair loss. And by the way, I know that many of you who are watching this, uh, this video and, and who have lupus, your doctor prescribed you vitamin D and you're not taking it regularly. We know that because in clinical studies, we, see, we know that around 45 to 50 percent of our patients don't take their vitamin D like they should. But please remember, it's important for your hair growth to take that vitamin D. But also we need to make sure that the iron levels are normal, so we'll check something called the ferritin level, and also that there's no thyroid abnormalities by checking the TSH level, because these are correctable causes of this type of hair loss. Another important point is that many of you who are watching this video are taking a supplement called biotin. It's, it's um, on the bottles of biotin. It always says that it helps out with nails and hair. I'm not a big believer in biotin, by the way, for lupus hair, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But a very important point about biotin is that it can cause abnormalities on your blood tests that are not real. For example, it can make your blood tests look like you have an, like, like you have an act, overactive thyroid gland. It can also look like you might have iron deficiency. It can tell your doctor that you might have these problems and then they might want to put you on iron supplements or treat you for a thyroid condition, even though those are perfectly normal. And so it's really important that you stop taking biotin three days before all laboratory work, and that's to keep it from interfering with these blood tests. In some laboratories, it can even cause the anti-double-stranded DNA level to be abnormal when it's not actually abnormal. So that's a very important point to remember from this video. So let's go back to my patient who had the severe systemic lupus. So I placed her on a treatment for her lupus nephritis. I put her on uh, mycophenolate, which is Celsept, high doses of steroids and hydroxychloroquine. And this is what she looked like six months later. Her hair was almost completely grown back and she was ecstatic. Today, I still follow up with my patient, and, and her hair is even more full today than it was ever back then. So this is what happens with scarring, with non-scarring alopecia. It can absolutely grow back. Some people with systemic lupus can also have a type of skin involvement called subacute cutaneous lupus. If this affects the scalp, this also can cause a non-scarring alopecia. And so that's a good thing to, to realize if you, if you have, uh, you have subacute cutaneous lupus and if you notice some hair loss, have your doctor check your scalp and see if the subacute cutaneous lupus is affecting the scalp because if you treat that better, then the hair should grow back. Now let's talk about the worst type of hair loss that can happen with lupus, and that's scarring alopecia. Scarring means that scar tissue is laid down, it's permanent, and it never grows back. 
The medical term for this, and again, I think that it's helpful for lupus patients to understand what the, the medical terms are just in case you get your medical records. It's also called cicatricial alopecia. Cicatricial means scarring. And it, and it comes from the, the medical term for scar. The medical term for scar is cicatrix. And so, uh, so cicatrix in the adjective form is cicatricial or cicatricial al al alopecia means exactly the same thing as scarring alopecia. Well, scarring alopecia is a medical emergency. The reason it's a medical emergency is that when we catch it in the inflammatory stage and treat it, we can stop that permanent scarring from occurring. So you want to see, you want to see a doctor right away, or you want to see you want to have a plan at hand, at home where you can start treating it right away. And we'll talk about that. By far, the most common cause of scarring alopecia in lupus patients is discoid lupus, and that's what this patient of mine here has. If you notice on her cheek, she has this discoid or this round shaped area or discoid shaped area that has discoid lupus. Notice the pink area around the edge. That's the active inflammatory stage. That's the part that we can treat and get it under control and keep it from causing scarring because when this occurs in the scalp, it can cause permanent hair loss. Notice in the center of that discoid lupus, you see the white area or the light colored area? That is permanent scar tissue. If that occurred in the scalp, she would have permanent hair loss in the middle of that part. If, in people who have skin of color, this can be devastating because this discoid lupus lesion here, even if I were to control it with really good uh, with medications for her lupus, unfortunately it would leave an area of white pigmentation there which cosmetically can be quite disturbing. Now this is the best time to catch discoid lupus or scarring alopecia. Sometimes it's very hard to see anything going on at all, but the person will notice some itchiness or the notice some tenderness of the scalp. And this is, this by the way, is when I want to see a, have my patient see a very good medical dermatologist because sometimes getting a little tiny biopsy of this area can tell me that there's, that there's inflammation going on in the scalp that's due to lupus. And if I treat this right in this stage, they'll have no hair loss whatsoever. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen very often. Usually we get the patient when they already have some active discoid lupus. And notice this patient's picture right here, how most of it is red. So this is actively inflamed, but, in, but unfortunately, there's already permanent scar tissue in the middle, like where you see the, uh, the white areas and the scaling in the center. So this person already has scarring and permanent alopecia. I want to treat this right away so that it can prevent further hair loss from happening. This is another one of my patients, and notice at the very front part of her scalp, she has this white area that is due to what we call burned out discoid lupus. It's not active at all anymore. I wish I would have saw her very early on in her lupus treatment because I could have treated this immediately when she first started to have discoid lupus, and we could have kept this permanent hair loss from occurring in the first place. Now, rarely she will have flare-ups of her discoid lupus, and when she does, she has a plan on what she can do to help it out because as soon as she feels some tenderness or some itchiness of that area she knows, and some increased redness, she knows that that discoid lupus is active and she starts to use steroid cream on it right away, which can nip it in the butt and get it under control right away. 